Golduck is an extremely underwhelming Pokemon competitively. Seriously, Game Freak, give this thing psychic typing or something. Just buff it, please. We're literally begging. But it's one of the only two Pokemon that learn the move Simple Beam. Simple Beam changes the opponent's ability to Simple, which doubles the effects of stat changes. Now we can pivot into Gardevoir, who can then trace the Simple ability and set up with Calm Mind Boost to become twice as effective, and Stored Power does huge damage. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle today. I have a super fun match for you. As always, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it'll only take you a second. I promise you won't regret it. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Quillfish. I decided to toss out the camera up and Humphrey is straight up allergic to water. So I'm not in the greatest of spots here. However, considering this is a lead Quillfish, I'm thinking there's a pretty good chance they just go for something like the spikes on turn one, expecting a switch or even like a rain dance because I do have the Ludicolo on the team. So I'm just gonna go right for that Earth Power, and instead they just straight up obliterate me right to the humps with the Waterfall. And I am just down camera up. I don't have a lot that wants to switch directly into this thing, so I predict them to over predict, and you know, it doesn't really work out. So at least now I get to switch into whatever I want. I unfortunately don't get my hazards up for the game, and I decide to bring in everybody's favorite flesh hands. He's not iron, he's instead just normal hands. I go for the fake out. The reason is because if this thing's holding something like a Focus Ash, I'd like to break that and then knowing an Earthquake should be able to take care of it. So, they are just going to stay in and they do go for that Rain Dance. That tells me this thing's either Damp Rock or it was running something like that Focus Ash. So, I can now freely hit him with the Earthquake. Old Cross-Eyed Ass Quillfish does go down, pop his little Balloon Party, and now we are even in the score a little bit. But, what that does do is opens the door for Ludicolo, and Buddy likes it damp. This thing with its Swift Swim ability is now going to be the fastest Mon on either side, and he's just having himself a little, little wet dance party. The good news is, if there's anybody on my team that's fit to handle the Ludicolo, it's definitely it's going to be Hariyama. There's only one place Homeboy would rather be, that's probably at the buffet. But, being a Salt Vest, I know that I can take attacks from this thing all day long. So, I go for the knockoff there, get rid of the Life Orb, even make it so it hits a little bit less hard. But... I figure if they do decide to go for another Giga Drain, I can actually have a pretty nice switch into the Go-Go here. I can come in, and as long as they don't go for the Ice Beam prediction, I should be in a pretty safe spot. Now, I come in here, they do in fact go for the Hydro Pump, of course, that is going to connect, and just waters the old goat a little bit. It hurts a little tiny bit, but after Leftovers Recovery, it's looking like I actually am in range to take an Ice Beam, since this thing doesn't have its Life Orb anymore, and I also have enough chip on it to where a Horn Leech should be able to take care of it because it's a neutral hit. So. They're going to go for that Ice Beam, and this is why Go-Goat is actually the GOAT. I'm able to take that, fire off a nice little Horn Leech, regen a little bit of health, but more importantly, now the Ludicolo is taken care of, and no longer a Swift Swim threat anymore. So, they now get a Revenge Switch into whatever they want. After the Leftover Recovery, Go-Goat isn't really out of health to be able to take on much on their team, and they're actually going to use this opportunity to bring in the Scizor. And this thing is actually a huge problem. The main reason is that pretty much any time there's a Scizor around, you're going to be liable for taking some bullet punches to the chin. And a lot of the time they're going to be set up with the Swords Dance. And the Go-Goat find himself in a position where I am kind of a good option to set up on. I decide to go for the Earthquake just as my highest damage output, get a little bit of chip here as, yeah, they do go for that Swords Dance. And at this point, I don't really have much that can switch into this thing. I know that my defensive option is going to be the Galarian Weezing. However, a plus two bullet punch from this Scizor is way too close of range. It's basically a kill here. So I don't have the option to switch out. I just decide to stay in here. They are going to go for that bullet punch, take out the Go-Goat. But that's fine. I did what I needed to do. I was able to take care of the Ludicolo. And now we have old Big Meaty Claws over here as a threat I need to figure out. So what I decided to do here is... I'm actually going to go into the Golduck. So the Golduck is mostly playing the role on the team to be able to go for that simple beat. Now, in this situation, I decide I'm actually just going to go for the flip turn. Now, I know that they're not going to go for the bullet punch as I resist it. I can get some chip with this flip turn and then go into something like the Hariyama that doesn't have a whole lot of value left in the match. So I get that flip turn off. It's not going to do a whole lot because I'm mainly... Uh, a special attacker that's just there for good pivot, but it puts it around half to where I feel comfortable that I can pick this thing off. So, I bring in the Hariyama here as they do go for the X-Scissor, basically trying to land that on the Golduck, and uh, Iron Hands is in a situation where, yeah, the Bullet Punch is just going to take care of me, and at least now I can get a free switch back into the Golduck. Now, I can go for a Surf, and at the health this thing is at, it should be able to grab a kill. And if it actually doesn't, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident in that I can take one attack from this thing in return. So, 
I bring in Golduck. He's got his arms out all crazy, looking pretty gangster. I go for this Surf, and I'm thinking that Rain actually be, would have been pretty nice to have around here. They do go for the Bullet Punch, thinking uh, they are just going to get knocked down here and out sped. Uh, so it does a little bit of chip damage there. I go for the Surf, and it literally lives it with 2 HP. So... We're both bamboozled as fuck over here. We thought that was going to kill, and uh, it doesn't. So now this allows them to go for one more bullet punch, but luckily, Golduck toughs it out so I wouldn't feel sad, and then I can finish this thing off with the flip turn. So we neutralize the threat of the Scizor, and Golduck actually is still around. Now, if I'm fast enough, I can still pull off the Simple Beam, and it's looking like the, uh, the Gardevoir in the back is really going to be kind of my win condition in terms of being able to set up. Uh, and sweep the rest of their squad. So that is still the main primary goal. However, I do still have uh, the beast, Doug Dimadome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimadome. I come in, throw some juice all over the place, make it misty as hell, and they get a matchup on whatever they would like against this thing. So they decide to go into the Rotom. This thing is the best option they have left to handle the Weezing, and I figure I'm gonna go for the Sludge Bomb here. I'm choice specs. I know that I can take at least one attack from them. Uh, they actually go for the Discharge and do a whole bunch of damage. As I go for the Sludge Bomb, and it actually doesn't quite end up knocking them out. I'm just out here falling short today, but it is what it is. They can finish me off with one more discharge, and now I find myself in a spot where it's gonna come down to kind of how this this toaster is rolling here. If it's a plus speed nature, it outspeeds Golduck and takes me out, but if it's not, if it's running something like Modest, I can actually outspeed and get off the simple beam. So that is the plan. And all Golduck's gotta do here is execute, baby. Literally any time you're running Golduck, it's just a liability out here, but I am in fact faster, and while I could have just knocked this thing out with a Surf, the Simple Beam is going to change this thing's ability around, and they're probably thinking, literally, what? They do go for a Discharge here, and that is going to knock out the Golduck. So, I am down to my final Pokemon left, and that is the Absolute Beast, which is the Gardevoir. So, I can come in here, and of course we then trace this thing's Simple ability. I say, hey, actually, I'm going to borrow that real quick. And now we're feeling nice and simplified, just exactly how we want to be. So we're in a situation where, of course, this thing is only a special attacker. I'm essentially free to go for a Calm Mind here. Instead of the usual plus one in both stats, it's actually going to give me the plus two because of that simple ability. So I do actually go for that Calm Mind, going to just boost that special attack and special defense. And this thing does stay in and just go for another Discharge. So this damage actually tells me this thing is running Choice Specs because... It actually also did way too much against the Galarian Weezing anyway, so it's locked into the Discharge here. And at this point, I'm free to go for a second Calm Mind. What's that, what that's going to do is give me essentially four separate stat boosts that boost my stored power by 20 for each increase. I don't know, that was confusing as hell. But moral of the story, stored power is OP right now, and I'm taking Discharges. However, <laughs> they actually end up getting the Para, and that's where... That's kind of worst case scenario in going for that second set of Calm Minds. I wanted to go for it just because it gives me enough to knock out the rest of their team. But on this turn, they're actually going to end up switching out here. They go into the Conkeldur on the turn that I actually go for the Draining Kiss. Smooch him right on his little clown nose and just straight up knock that thing out while also getting me back to full HP. Which, that could not have been more clutch. They probably just expected me to Calm Mind again. Or <laughs> at least luckily I didn't get fully parried there. So... Now they're down to the two Pokemon left, and in comes the Clefable. This thing is still a little bit of an issue, but I can go for the Stored Power. Sadly, they are actually faster than me because of the fact that I am paralyzed, so they decide to go for a Calm Mind of their own. They're like, damn, bro, you're looking, you're looking pretty calm and simple over there. I'm going to try to test it out. I go for the Stored Power even after the plus one special defense boost from that thing. This is a Clefable we're talking about, the thickest girl from Gen 1, and uh, it's going to do over half, which is absolutely amazing. So... I'm just going to go for it again, of course, as they decide to Calm Mind again. They're probably thinking, hey, I can live, I can potentially Moonlight, and I can I can out Calm Mind, the Calm Minder. But let me tell you something, not today. I do break through the para, go for another Stored Power, and that is going to be a dead, chewed-up piece of bubblegum. So that was pretty amazing. And now the final Pokemon is the Rotom. It also would have been really nice to have my Stealth Rock up here, because this thing would literally just come in and faint to that. But... We gotta do it the old-fashioned way, and they go for a Discharge here again. Uh, with the Choice Specs damage and plus four special defense, I do still take it nicely, but I get fully parried because it's bound to happen. But at this point, it's like, hey, if it happens four more times, I'm kind of screwed. But luckily, I do break through on the second one, and a Stored Power is gonna clean up the game. So that is gonna be the end of the match. I thought it was just a fun one, and it came down to basically... My team strategy having to work down to the last two Pokemon. So, listen, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. I really do appreciate all the support, and I will catch you next time. Peace out.